something has created it. So therefore, we say that must be a creator, with a conscious mind and a will. I mean, and the, the consciousness factor must be there. Makes sense. Yeah, one one thing I admire about about my friend um, is like he can quote anything from that graph. Yeah. Uh, which which I find amazing to be honest. Like um, and he has said a lot of interesting things uh, where like it's obviously the book was um made 14,000 years ago, wasn't it? 1,400 years. The Quran was compiled finally 1,400 years ago. 1,400. However, what we say is it's always been the eternal message because that concept of one true God has always existed. There cannot be any other one being except for the one creator. There can't be a multiplicity of different gods. You understand what I'm, what I'm saying? Because then you could ask, well, who created that God that created that God? And then just say they both have a difference of opinion on a matter. Who has... Eternal, like Precisely. Eternal. Yes, something which is which is definitively eternal. Because then you could say you could, you know, you would just basically say, well, who created that God? Who created that God? Who that would go on forever? And if it goes on forever, we would not come into the present. That's something very worth contemplating. We would not come into the present if, if we have a past chain of infinite chain of dependent chain of events. Are you finding what I'm saying to you? So if it goes on to forever, like who created that God, who created that God, if that goes on forever, we cannot then, by proxy, come into the present. I'm chugging at that bit. <laughs> so basically speaking, infinite regression is the technical oh, term. Keep on thinking about yeah, past if it goes, time. Yeah, if it goes past, past. Yeah. If it goes past, if there's a past sequential chain of dependent chain of events, which goes backwards, then if it goes on forever, then we will never come into the present. So just say at work, you, you, your boss, um, says you've got to do such and such, or you've got to do such and such task, but you've got to ask your boss in order to do that task. They say, just one moment, let me ask my boss. Then that yeah, goes on forever. Yeah. Would you ever do your task? No. Oh, okay, that yeah. makes more sense. Makes yeah. more sense. Yeah. Well, um, a question I have is like, my friend, obviously, my friend Alex, uh, has been thinking about uh, the Yeah. Um, and I sort of said to him, like when when you haven't lived yeah. that way mm. I just feel like there's so much like sin that you have to overcome mm. um, that like it's even the little things like not little things but like waking up before the sunrise oh yes and like um, when you've been so you like drinking yeah you, like stop that yeah like, yeah all these sorts of mm. things um, mm. see with everything you give up there will be a better alternative for you so let's observe drinking a culture which is prevalent in our western societies what does it bring you at the end of the day destruction you, you want you to have one too many in these faculties of your mind. I've often seen something which I find intrinsically in, irritable. Very pleasant people throughout the whole week who do their work professionally. Come Friday evening, what's that? they act totally different. Weird and shouting and screaming unnecessarily or laughing excessively when there's no read to. They've changed, they've changed. Are you seeing see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah out this and that just cha shows that there is not the illicit character, well, the complicit character that you should normally be. So the the intoxication factor is that it, it leaves you all over the place. We know what billions of pounds a year it costs the NHS, drunk and disorderly offences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's always a relation to alcohol con um, Do you, consumption. Um, is anything with your? Beliefs do they do they translate in like like, for instance, like when you vote for the government? How do you think about that? Is there anything different? Or just your vote for the government? What do you mean by that? As in like when you're voting for like the next prime minister, um, there's what what comes into your mind? Are you just thinking like I don't want to say normal person, but like is there any other considerations in that? In voting? Yeah, just like really. Okay. I mean, I mean, Honestly, because, I'm so yeah, unaware. Yeah. Like, no, because essentially, we believe, I mean, we, one must live by the law of God. That's very important, you see. And that law of God must be substantial within your life. So, because by human tendency, we adapt to our environments, our changes. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, up until 1968, in this country, homosexuality was illegal. 
punishable. But it's now legal. Who defines what is immoral and immoral? Another 50 years' time, incest may well become legal. Yeah, 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 yeah. To be fair, like, definitely something that has become more prevalent in my mind recently is just like the degeneracy of like, Western culture and, and not being principled at all. Like, no more compass. Um, but when you take over authority, when the man's authority is taken over in the home, particularly, you see, when women usurp men as the dominant figure, when when fathers can't see their children as a result of the feminist push, as a result of they're from the top, people like how it works was unique. You had the former Home Secretary, um, you had um, Priti Patil in conjunction with Chrisida Dick, all the police, right through to social services, up to the judiciary, all usurped by the feminist movement, which is seeking to crush men. When we have this degeneracy taking place, as, and this is a small example, when the father figure has been destroyed within his own home, when he has no more authority, that is, a, that is a, the, the sequential method in which the family will be destroyed. Then you talk about, did you know, in this country, within the first, years of, first three years of marriage, 65% of marriages fold. That wasn't the case here a number of generations ago, where people had common strong values. But those values have been chipped away and eroded. So as Muslims, we also have some certain eschatological beliefs, which means end time scenarios which will take place in which human history will be unlike it's ever been. So it's only a matter of time before two mothers pick up their daughter, or two fathers pick up their son. That nucleus family will be no more, the mother and father. Is a uh, how how do you become tolerable? Like, for instance, why do lots of Muslims like come over to like from another place to a Western country if if their principles and they can't practice their belief yeah. as much? There's a number of reasons for that. Firstly, the societies that they've lived in have become so intrinsically corrupt and deflated that they can't break out of that chain of cycle. So when we get corrupt leaders, I'll give you a country an example, like Pakistan is an example, a very good example, a country renowned to be corrupt beyond belief. How does it work? It works as such when the leaders of these, country, of these countries take refuge here, yes? And our British authorities play into the hands of these individuals how to subdue your people. And how do they do that? They do it nominally by bringing these people enticing them with greed to suppress their, their communities. So those who steal from the country, those who are imprisoned as a result of corruption, where do they take refuge? Here, in central London. The Prime Ministers of Pakistan living, up, living it up in central London with millions of pounds of properties. Where they're taking the money from, they're stolen it from the people. So the whole objective is that people are coming here because in, within the vicious circle that they've been entrapped in, that they, they don't find any way out. So, so they leave that. So it's not an excuse, not a, a cop-out. People often say, well, that's a cop-out. Why can't you change yourselves? It's because intrinsically you're, you're controlled from the top, you see. So corruption is manifestly spread from the authorities and you can't get out of that grip. The moment someone wants to make a change, they'll, they'll have you. Imran Khan. You know Imran Khan? Yeah, very famous cricketer. And um, oh, was he the person who was like got taken out? Yeah, taken. He was leader of the country, but he, he wanted Pakistanis to, for example, no longer be under the control of the American dollar. The IMF controlled Pakistan through America, through, through America. He didn't want that anymore. They got together and they got rid of it, Imran Khan through Western influence because Pakistanis are subservient to them. That's an example, you see. So, the, uh, to answer your question, it's the subjugation of the people so that they remain within, out, within the sphere of certain outside influence. That's not the entire reason as to, their, to the fact that they've collapsed, but they're also the mitigating factors. As you may mention, they come here for the want of the fact that these economies are somewhat stronger. It's just like Eastern Europeans who are going off to Dubai. You know, they're in, their, in their bucket loads, many people over here are going off to these growing economies in the Middle East. So it's mainly for an economic thing. But your question is, if essentially from what I gather is if things are so terrible here then why are people flocking here? Well that's because of the historical things that unfortunately Britain has done you see for example the country in itself which is quite a first world progressive country it's been made from the blood of those who have sacrificed for them and they've taken unilaterally from these countries this is a brutal fact it's not to downcast the Englishman no it's just a fact of how things are
So those are, those are some of the responses. I can go into much more detail, but um, essentially speaking, what we invite people to is, a, is your concept of your creator. One day, as they say, we're going to pop our clogs halfway down the giant slalom, as they say in English slang, meaning we're not going to be no more. Yeah, it's like a little joke I've just done there, which you may not have caught on there straight away. It's a bit of a cockney joke. But anyway. Uh, One, another question I has. Um, do you just explain to me what's going on Yeah, certainly. So, as you're aware, um, well, again, we talk about Britain and. Um, so, Britain had control of Palestine in the earlier part of the 20th century and even earlier. So, um, essentially what happened was that um, mass Jewish migration took place from particularly post-Second World War. So, because they controlled the British mandate, had control in Palestine, then they, um, between them and the French, um, post the first, post -war, during the First World War, they had agreed to carve up Palestine between themselves. And because the Palestinians were hoping for independent, in, 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 um, independent um, entities from the Turkish Empire as well, the Ottoman Empire, which also had control within that region. So, post the Second World War, this First World War, this was their attempt to divide up Palestine. It was 100% nearly um, Arab Muslim that was a populace. But because they allowed these uh, allowed lots of Jewish people to enter Palestine, not through their through their own mandate, in effect, they because they controlled. So they took over vast swathes of land by force as well. This is a brutal fact. And then we know what happened post 1948 when the Israeli government came into power. Um, they, you know, they bombed the, the British consulate in um, in Jerusalem, um, uh, the King David Hotel. So they killed many British um, uh, uh, officials, and they really took over. I'm, I'm just summarizing things as quickly as possible again without going to depth so that I won't be here forever but essentially speaking they took those lands which belong to the Muslims uh, particularly and um, this is how unfortunately they have they've since suffered and they've been essentially kicked out of their homes it's like you, you've been kicked out of your home and you're living in a in a junkyard for example all your and you know the terrible atrocities which take place against Palestinians so these events that you're seeing at the moment is also a result of the frustration that these people have had for decades and decades you, know, you understand pure torment that they go through at the hands of the Israeli authorities and they're really suffering terribly decades upon decades and it's you know it's a point of it's a, it's, it comes to the point where they can't take any more you know when you're taught when you're when you're lost it, how does it end? It essentially ends with um, Israel trying, you know, just, um, you know, taking, going back, leaving, leaving the land, essentially speaking, which they've illegally taken. Ill you know, you heard about the illegal occupations. Ill yeah. So there's, there's places like Jerusalem, which they've taken away, which belong to the, yeah. So they've annexed all these places, taken all the properties, all types of, um, you know, the legal framework is all supporting of Israeli Jews in particular, the Arabs who lived in subjugation and in, in destitution in effect. And this is all as a result of, um, you know, the outer influences, um, which Britain was in control of those areas in particular post-1917. And a lot of this places in the world like Kashmir in northern Pakistan between Pakistan and India that is also as a result of British foreign policy where the Indians are now um, subjugating Kashmiri Muslims over there for many decades it's like northern Pakistan so these are all action as a result of the you know, historical what Britain, I mean what Britain has unfortunately done so um, and then partition in the Asian subcontinent that was also a factor so the, what, the, con the aspect of divide and rule British were masters that as well they divided people amongst each other made them fight whilst they remained kings so these were in fact things that occurred um, now that's not to say every Englishman was a crafty little sod no they were rather you know uh, people who did certain acts quite um, intelligibly as well did certain good acts as well but hitherto it has created much of the anarchy in the world today you see is as, as a result of British foreign policy to be honest that's just a brutal fact and no one's having to pop at any Englishman for it yeah but despite this, what we invoke for people, we want people to ex understand your creator. So for example, in our view, Jesus Christ, upon whom be peace, is a great and mighty prophet of God, a great and mighty messenger. And we believe the tragedy of history for Christians. But now is that they believed in such warped concepts that a man can be God. Which is... That's what we probably said a lot. The difference is, is mainly, they kind of believe Jesus like the 
Christ. Yes. So Jesus in the Quran is referred to as a prophet. And when we examine the New Testament, a very little careful and understanding of it will tell you that Christ himself mentioned himself as a prophet of God in the Bible as well. He doesn't go around the streets of Jerusalem or Galilee beating his chest and saying, I'm God. Rather, he invokes himself as a prophet, which is the Islamic testification. Even the New Testament doesn't teach that he's God. Rather, one who represents God. You know, obviously, being so strong, how are you tolerable of others? How are we tolerable of others? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, for example, um, in the Islamic narrative, uh, there's a verse in the Quran, well, there's a mini, very minute chapter, which says, Let there be no compulsion in religion, for truth stands out clearly from falsehood. Now, when we look at, for example, when the Muslims were ruling Spain several hundred years ago, uh, for a long period of time, People like Jews who were traditionally persecuted in Europe, they took refuge in, um, in, in, in Muslim-led Spain. So if anyone's out there concerned, oh, if Muslims take a walk, on earth's going to happen to us, nothing's going to happen. They lived in Spain for several hundred years, and that was the hub of what you call um, exp uh, of, um, um, enlightenment, education, learning. You know, King John, I think, the second, when he saw how progressive the Muslims were, a lot of the British um, co constitution framework has come as a result of the Muslims. Even the, the Muslim, um, uh, one of the Muslim leaders, post the demise of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was often quoted in Parliament, going back like a, a century or two ago, by William Gladstone and other such leaders, David Lloyd George and, and so and such and such. So they, so King John, the, I think it was the first or second, he took, he went out and asked his entourage to find a system out there which can better our country so they so his people went around around the world they found out in spain that the muslims were very much progressive very much first world as pr perhaps you could say you know the western countries are now in a nominal sense so that was the case back then so um uh, and for several hundred years they lived there was absolute peace and harmony between everyone no issues whatsoever so see what it is my friend you see when the concept of god is essential when we drum home the fact there's only one creator who's unlike his creation so god as i said is not a man, not a woman, not an idol, not a statue. Once we grasp this, trust me, half of the world's problems will be resolved. What, like, you know when you pray, what, what do you feel? Feel. Like, what, what is it that's going on in your head? Okay, first of all, the, re the recitation is taken in Arabic. 80% of Muslims are non-Arabs. I'll repeat that again. 80% of Muslims are non-Arabs. Arabic is the language of the Quran, it's the language of the, of the Arab people. I can read the Quran in Arabic, I can't speak colloquial Arabic. So in itself, it's a miracle in itself that even ch young children who go to these little mosques, you know, learn the Quran, even after, after school, have an hour's uh, break, get ready for the mosque. Learn. So we learn it in its original language. This is unique to Islam. Yeah, so the prayer factor is essential that we get close to our Creator, you see. So we pray five times by bowing and prostrating. In a mosque, it's the only religious institute you will go in where there is no imagery, no statue of anyone, no pictures of anyone. Yeah, it's, it's just absolutely magnificent to behold. And this is not, again, this is the paradox of history. The way we pray by bowing first, then kneeling in prostration, is something that the prophets in the Old Testament did as well. Even Christ prayed the way we did. Exactly the same way, by bowing and prostrating to God. And it's made mention in Nehemiah chapter 8, that's in the Old Testament, that they used to bow before God and then kneel in prostration. They used to line up in rows. Moses would line his people up in rows and pray to God by bowing and prostrating to him. Before we offer our prayers, we do a mini wash by washing our hands, finishing by washing our feet. That's what they do as well. That's what they used to do in their time as well. You know, so this has always been to glory of God. So what, what is this all about? What is Islam all about? It's all about recognition of a creator and we live our lives according to the creator's will. It's not just a religion, it's a total way of life which encompasses social, economic, political, every type of structure of society it delves with and it deals with. It's got its own finances, own law, own laws of, in relation to so many different things. For example, in this country, inheritance law applies. Whereas you, you are taxed. If, for example, God forbid something happens to my parents, your parents, uh, precisely. And if, if your dad, let's say your parents don't live, make a will and, um, and um, they don't live and they pass away within seven years of making a will, you're in for a massive chunk of inheritance tax. Only after seven, if, you, if they survive seven and a half years after making a will, then there is no inheritance tax. But in Islam, there is no such concept. So when you die, the government can't nick your money which belongs to your kids. So, so basically, what I'm saying to you, Number one, the concept of God. 
an unseen one supreme being who is independent of the universe. That is the God of Islam. That's the God of Abraham, Moses, Jesus and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them. They all invited their communities to worship in God and God alone. So even Christ, who has been misquoted in the New Testament relentlessly, even he said he's a prophet. In the New Testament, the Bible, he refers to himself as a prophet. He doesn't go, he doesn't go around the streets of Galilee and Jerusalem saying that he's God. This is very important in Islam, you see, the number one thing, that we don't associate God to his creation. Certainly God is near to us, he's made everything, but he's not like his creation. He's beyond the creation. Um, uh, sorry. Um, sorry. Um, right. If I was going to learn more about Islam, is there anyone on YouTube or anything? Yes, I mean, uh, there are a number of people, you, wherever you're inclined to in terms of um, your thinking process, there's so many things you can do. I mean, in East London Mosque, not far from here, you know what East London Mosque is? Uh, oh, you're not from, okay. So, I mean, it's, yeah, in YouTube you can learn, let's go general online, learning about Islam, what its fundamental beliefs. I know Elliot is into intriguing philosophy, and in certain, there are certain people who are very well versed in proving Islam uh, through philosophical means, or whatever means that you wish to, uh, wish you to undertake. But just do a general search. If you look for the basic tenets, there'll be tons of information on YouTube, the, particularly the five pillars, the daily prayers, five daily prayers, which we do all, all year round. Go in month fasting during the month of Ramadan once a year. Why do we do that? Because it's a commandment of God, number one. Number two, to understand how people who are less fortunate than you are suffering. And then thirdly, to really make a change within your lives. So that fast that you've done where you where you have you know resisted water and food between certain hours it should then internally make you a better person as well this is the three fundamental factors of that so then uh, there is a going on a pilgrimage to mecca once in your lifetime there is um, giving charity pardon yeah, I've done that. Yeah, I've done that a number of years ago with, with an English friend of mine who was a revert to Islam. I knew him for six months and he became Muslim. And he, we used to do this type of work. He, he would always be badgering me, let's go to do the pilgrimage. So we went together. Here's a question I had for uh, I was like, say you live in the same country as um, where the. What's it called? Mecca. Yes. Um, so you live in the same country. That's less of a sacrifice as someone who's like saved that their life saving when. Yeah. Um, but I know all your sins are forgiven if you do that. Yeah, if you go to the Hajj, you perform it correctly and you go away with the determination to redeem yourself, then all your past sins are forgiven. But, but it's got to be on the condition that you make that attempt to forgive, uh, to seek sincere repentance from whatever ills that you've committed. So it's, in Islam, we don't have a concept like original sin where Christ comes down and dies for the sins of mankind. No, if you sin, you just ask God Almighty, oh my Lord, forgive me, you are the most forgiving. And this is what actually the Bible teaches as well. So this is the relentless theme of um, Islam, that if you do sin, just ask God, please forgive me, you're the most, and he will forgive you if it's sincere repentance, sincere repentance. And that's what it's all about. Very straightforward, very easy, you see. And that's why it's very much, people are compelled towards it. Many, many people are becoming Muslim from all different backgrounds. It will amaze you. And it will really, really amaze you, particularly once you understand. Um, like you say, you're from Newbury, um, um, and in Newbury was famous for racing, but um, <laughs> horse racing, wasn't it? Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, so basically, these are the, these are the uh, fundamental tenets of the religion. The, actually, it's very easy to follow. People are scared our Muslims are very rigid and very, like, totally dedicated. It could be difficult. No, because... The only thing which is repetitive is the prayers. That's the only thing which, um, particularly the early morning prayer. But even that early morning prayer now, in the year, time of year we're in, it, you can pray up till about seven o'clock. So most people are going to work in the morning. It's quite, and then you have the early afternoon prayer. Yeah, not about ten minutes max. You can go if you want to go to the. A lot of people who are dedicated, they'll go to the mosque. That's my friend, revert to Islam twelve weeks ago. If you heard his story, it will bamboozle you. Here he is. Just over here. So, um, so basically speaking, um, it's a way of life. You pray for. Why do we pray for? To acknowledge our Creator. You have three meals a day, don't you? Yeah. What if you miss a couple of meals? You feel hungry. So we, yeah, yeah. So we feel the soul cra cra craves our Creator as well. You've got two nice eyes. If I offer you fifty million quid for each of those eyes, and you go blind for the rest of your life, and I give you that money, would you take the money? Not a chance. So your Creator has given you this all for free. 
What? Why do you? Why aren't we grateful? Yeah. So, like I said, with, when it comes to Christianity, which you may or may not be familiar with, you know, we don't we don't have this belief that man dies for your sins, which is nonsensical. We don't believe that a man can be God. We believe God has created everything. God is beyond the creation in a realm where we can't comprehend. We're limited beings. We can only think beyond a certain reason. So, hence, this is the invitation that we make that people make that step because you made an excellent point about degeneracy and that degeneracy has come about particularly over the maybe last 25 30 years it wasn't the case before when i was growing up you know there were some values people had but no those values are totally being eroded and we believe there are certain fact forces at work who are propelling that you know what i admired was like things like lockdowns um, made me see like nah, they're, they're not working for good. Oh, I've got something. Oh, thank you. Something. Uh, yeah, right, I left one. You twisted my arm. <laughs> so, um, so these are some of the points that, and we would hence invite people to accept the religion. So straightforward. Like my friend there, twelve weeks ago, we met him outside Whitechapel station. Okay, spoke to born again Christian. Spoke to him about 25 minutes, he had some questions, which didn't make sense in terms of his Christian belief. He became Muslim. Ryan. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. How you doing, bro? This is my friend I've been just speaking to. Ryan here has been Muslim for three months today. Yeah. Yeah. How are you finding it, bro? Um, yeah. It's all right, I'm a little bit but, what, what did your like, family and friends think about? Uh, they're supportive now, but at first I wasn't able to get in touch with them, sort of thing. That's a bit strange to me. But now I've been in touch, they're actually they're quite supportive, really supportive. In fact, it's, well, changed my life in so many ways. In just 12 weeks? In just 12 weeks? I've explained to the whole thing. Basically, I was homeless as I and I had no job, no living room to know or anything. No source of income or anything like that. And then just in the short space of 12 weeks, I mean, I stung in the year and then got um, SIA badge on the way, back from the to go back into security. I've got a steady income, I've got a roof over my head, so I didn't actually. How is all that thing? Well, because it just shows that Allah has provided in so many ways that you're able to rely on him if you have any sort of problems. Well, do you, you know when you go to like mosques and things like that, um, do you ever feel, because obviously you've never been Muslim, but you've only been Muslim, do you ever feel uncomfortable like not knowing this man? Oh, never, never, because I know that if I've got a question, I can always ask, and half the time they'd always refer me to the Quran. Or, but I never feel uncomfortable in the mosque. I always feel, whenever I've done the prayer, I always feel a sense of, like, oh, yeah, I've, I've done that prayer, I really feel like a buzz. Like, it feels like a sort of a massive. Excuse the phrase, but it feels like that's a pie to me. Like so many people will turn around and go, oh, you shouldn't do that, but it feels like a massive, like, thing to me, it's a big deal. Where so many people feel they've done. How have you found it? Um, like, have you missed the pay? Yes, I've missed several prayers, but we're always able to make up for it. Good man. Okay. Uh, we, for example, if we miss the one, this is a prayer at about 6.25 in the morning. If we miss that, there's not really much we can do. But make up for it during the day, sort of thing. So uh, if you have another prayer in the afternoon, then you can sort of make up and just keep on going and so on and so forth. But you can always make up the prayers if you miss them. No one holds it against you or anything. You're prescri you're, you pay the prescribed times. So yeah, one must yeah. try to do it at the stipulated. However, because we're all human, we've all got weak tendencies, you know, we can oversleep sometimes. So that could be the case. 
So, um, in terms of uh, those five stipulated times, I don't think it's too difficult this time of year. Sunrise is about quarter past seven now. Going forward, is, I think uh, peak time is about five past eight in which the sun will rise in, in like December term. Um, so actually the players are very easy to perform, it's not too difficult, they don't last too long, you know. How have you found all the nights in your day about those prayers? Uh, easy. As long as you speak to people and tell them, I know it might be uncomfortable at first, but it's, if you speak to people and you say, look, I've become Muslim, I've got specific times so I need to do prayers like, are you happy with me being able to do it in those times or would you prefer that way? So half the time they'll turn around and say, yeah, fine, no problem. It's just religious. Because it's religious circumstances, they'll turn around and go, yeah, that's fine. Like I found in my essay the other day, I had to come out of the room and pray, which there were several others. So they just turn around and said, yeah, that's fine, no problem. And it's half the time they only take about 10 15 minutes to perform. That's sometimes. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. How, how have you found, like, obviously, like, I'm just assuming that you used to train, um, like, how you do No, I haven't drunk since I was 22. Okay. Uh, okay. No, I just thought, like, how have you found, like, not having certain vices, like, not so, like, no, I, I yeah. don't do that. But there, there used to be where, obviously, a oh, big boy used to enjoy me, like, the bacon sisters, yeah. and bacon sandwiches and all that lot. But, do you know what? It hasn't been a challenge. Because I've sort of learnt to live without it. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can have that. You can have bacon and sausage halal. I know it sounds paradoxical, but literally, you can go into the you can go into the vegan store and you can get something which is similarly tasty, but it's not obviously uh, made made of um, you know it's not made of bacon. So yeah, these are some of the points. Anything else you want to ask? You please. This is your opportunity. Anything you want to ask, mate? I don't get paid for these. Have you had any? Down points with it as well. <laughs> That's an interesting question. Obviously, it's benefited you massively. At the same time, it might not always be paid for you. No, I, I honestly don't think that has. I mean, there has been time. There has been times where I've missed prayers. And I've woke up and I thought, oh no, 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 what am I going to do, what am I going to do? But I've always spoke to someone about it, they've always just, don't worry, don't worry, catch up. Where I've made that big it's a downside, it's always like, there's always a source to the problem, so there's always a solution. So then what is, what's that all about? It's all about... If he's become Muslim, there's many people, I can show you so many videos which will refer you to our channels later. It's a natural inclination within the heart, you see, which calls out to your brain. The other day, I saw someone, I cannot remember what it's called, but it's like when they're, when someone has a bad day, they go, Allah, 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 I'm saying for him, you can watch his Shahada near Whitechapel Station around about. It's, it's called, yeah, the word is called, but it's called. Well, once I've, we, we finish, I'll come to you and we'll just I'll take, refer to the channel and we, you'll upload it relatively immediately. So, of an evening, this evening today, you can cuddle up and have a bit of entertainment on YouTube. Yeah, watch yourself. Yeah, yeah. You don't often get that opportunity there. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So, these are some of the factors, gentlemen, that we would invite people then to take in. Elliot, what, what, how are you going? What's your. You, what, where's your journey at? I just say, carried on study and I've been posed a couple of questions that have been, that have been very interesting. Excellent. Um, but yeah, carried on study and carried on to learn. Yeah, so absolutely, that, absolutely. That's the way to go forward, my friend. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. For uh, thank your you. Time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Would you, would you like to take a free copy of the Quran as a parting yeah, gift? Yeah. It's free of charge anyway, so just take it away. It's that blue copy over there, right in front of you. Have a good read of it. Any questions? We're here regularly yeah. on, on Wednesdays, particularly. 
from 5.30 onwards. Okay. All right, delighted cool. speaking to you. Cheers. You take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so delighted uh, uh, to have a good, great conversation with a very inquisitive young man who obviously is looking at Islam. We spoke to Elia, his friend, a couple of weeks ago, I think, and he's still investigating further. We mustn't be too pushy. Let them f see the facts. He was asking lots of questions. And it's, inshallah, with a sincere heart, Allah will guide him. Uh, Brother Ryan, who is a revert to Islam as well, gave him some excellent uh, tips and advice. Here he is, <laughs> just a reminder for us. So may Allah guide them all, inshallah. Islam is spreading, that's the promise of Allah. And we are seeing it. You see on these videos all the time. It's not eloquence on our part. You know, I was just thinking the other day about the, 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 some of the ladies who become Muslim, they cry after, after reciting the Shahada. Something they are unfamiliar with, but because it, the heart is speaking, Allah's put it within their heart. So may Allah guide us all. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you.